Hi, I'm Mike Mead from the Digit Me project here at the University of Central Lancashire. I'm a self-taught 3D print expert and we're going to talk about the hazards and pitfalls for printing movable 3D pieces. So, one of the first design considerations we want is for the strength of our piece. We print horizontally on a 3D printer and we build our layers up from the bottom. What we want to do is make sure our pieces are as strong as possible. So our strongest element is to go with the grain. Let the piece flex with the grain. Its weaker point comes on the shorter span as we go up the grain. For our moving pieces, we want to get as much of that long grain in as possible. That way, we keep the strength. If we go with the short grain, the pieces will snap. The longer ones, you get a little bit of flexibility and a lot more movement. We've considered our strengths and printing with the grain. What we also need to consider is our design of the pieces. The thinner and more fragile the pieces, the harder it is to remove the support and the easier they are to break. So what we want to do is make quite robust, chunky pieces that are printed with the grain. The ones that aren't will snap and break into smaller pieces and then all you do is lose all your movable parts. What we want to do is keep them thick, keep them chunky and give them some strength. We've made a lot of references to tolerance. Tolerance is the gap between the two solid pieces. It's the air that lets the piece move. We've created a small van with some problems deliberately added to show you how this works. So, the layer underneath has zero tolerance. It is a completely solid piece, which means when the next layer of plastic goes on, they'll fuse together. This is how we create our solid pieces, and we don't want them for movable parts. Even with the right tools and some gentle persuasion, there's no way that's going to come apart. Give yourself enough of a gap, enough tolerance, at least half a millimetre, preferably more. Because of the method that we're using, we only have a single stream of plastic. The support material is thinner layers of plastic inside that are going to allow us to build our upper layers. They hold the upper layers up. We've got to remove that to give ourselves moving pieces. So we're back with our van. I'm going to turn it over and you can see that the cavities that we left, all of our tolerances have been filled with support material which binds everything and stops it moving. What we're going to do, I'm just going to grab some tools. So we've got just a pair, of, a pair of snips and we'll cut away the support material that's holding it in place. You can recognise the support material from the main model as it usually comes away a lot easier. And we'll just keep peeling it away until we get down to the base of our model. The other option that you have, I use a thin scraper blade and you can just run it through just to break the bind that the support material has and you can also run it around any circular edges. Just take your time and just work your way around freeing up the two pieces of the model and when you're finished what you'll end up with is enough of a gap that your piece should go back to moving. The big point of that is make sure you can get to your support material. If it's inside that axle and you've not left enough tolerance to break it by force, it's not going to move. So those are a few things for you to consider when you're doing your designs and when you get your prints back. Take your time, have some patience, hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing you at the competition.